You may have seen the last video I did on the Singer Genie here and in that video I basically just did a, a quick assessment and a quick overview of this particular machine here. Uh, if you haven't seen that video I'll link it in up here somewhere and in the description below. Uh, today's video is going to be about you know uh, stripping the machine down, not fully uh, dis disassembling but just taking the covers off and uh, servicing the machine. I mentioned in the previous video that I had another Singer Genie. Uh, well, I went and had a look for it and found it, but it's actually not a Genie. Just have a quick look here. This is the machine I thought was a Genie. It's actually a Starlet. You know, so I'll do it, just do a quick um, preview of, a, of an upcoming video, really. I uh, intend on doing a video on this machine as well, just showing the minor differences between the two models. So this machine I assume was also sold in New Zealand, so whether they sold both the Genie and the Starlet in New Zealand, I don't know. I'm assuming that they sold both. The Starlet was generally sold in Europe as far as I know, and the Genie in the USA. Uh, but there's a couple of wee differences I noticed straight away, and just slightly different colour here. It's more of a um, sort of a salmon-y type colour rather than the genie sort of uh, out there sort of orangey colour. Yeah so and the button's slightly different here. I'm not going to go too far th through it at the moment but just to give you a quick uh, preview of what's coming up. This particular machine is missing the foot controller. I don't have the foot controller for it. Not sure what happened to that. I think this was a uh, t another tip find. And um, but what it does have is uh, some of the accessories which I mentioned also in the previous video. So you know it came in a little pouch like that, and there's a couple of presser feet and the little plate lifter there. So that's going to be quite interesting to uh, have a look at. A very similar machine. Again, the writing here is a different colour, and some of these legends here, different colour, and we've got a different stitch selection here as well. So yeah, keep an eye out for a uh, video on this machine here. I'm not sure what state this is in either, really. Uh, it's also in slightly better condition as well with the look of it. The case is not damaged like uh, the other one. This slide-on case here is in pretty good condition. Back to the star of the show here, the Genie here. So today I'll be pulling the covers off and getting access to the machine for servicing. So let's just start here by removing this thread here. The Starlet didn't have the manual either, so I assume they're fairly similar. Right yo, let's start by removing the faceplate here. Just a flathead screwdriver. Pretty uh, easy there. Might as well remove the press foot while I'm at it there. I'll be giving the machine a good clean too while I'm at it. I'll remove the plate here, so it's just a matter of sliding this plate here back and this little disc here, that's actually a spring-loaded shaft that heads down under the machine. So that just clamps the uh, plate down, the needle plate or the throat plate clamps it down. And there's a little locating shaft over this side here. So you lift this side, the right side here, and just slide the plate off. You can see the little post drop down there, spring-loaded post. And there's a little slot here. And if we want to remove the bobbin case, we can do so. Let's remove the bobbin there. Get rid of that thread. Might as well remove the bobbin case while we're at it. So to remove the bobbin case, you swing this little plate out of the way here. You should be able to just do that with your finger. And it swings that out of the way, allowing you to remove the bobbin case there. Just going to check that for damage, is it? Oh no. It's 
always a good idea to check your bobbin case for any sort of uh, damage, needle strikes or burrs and gouges. That one looks okay. So yeah, apparently th these are called the Apollo bobbin case. Sort of ties in with the era, does it? 1970s. The uh, Apollo space program, I guess. This plate here, you actually lift the front of it and slide it right forward and that pops it off the spring here. Just like that. Little uh, sliders that the spring goes into there. I'll show you how to put that back on. Let's try removing the back panel. Now I can see two screws here, one down here and one here. Now there will be a certain sequence for taking these apart. I haven't ever taken one apart before so I'm just going to wing it here. Slightly different screws, that's the this is the screw that came out of the, uh, from behind the handle there, the top. And that screw there is the one that came out from the lower left, looking from behind there. It's quite different, it's got a, like a little conical shape at the point there. Two of those. It's this one here. And yep, so that's loose there. I take it we can remove that. Oh, another one down here. That's that one there. Yeah, sometimes I find the spool pins sort of dip down and you know catch on the workings in there, so probably best to have that pulled up. Yeah, there we go. There's the back cover. Yeah, needs a good clean. There's the bobbin winder. I recall from the first video that uh, when I tried that out, it was slipping a fair bit. I think it needs a good oil. You do have to be careful when oiling these, though, not to over oil them, and because you don't want the oil dropping down onto the bobbin winder rubber there. That almost looks like some sort of um, sound dampening on the back of the inside cover there. There's a look at the inside of the spool pin there, it just drops down like that. There's a little clip there, just to stop it from pulling right out or dropping right under. Bob and winder tensioner there. Okay, let's have a wee look here. So we've got motor here drive belt, bulb, so that bulb holder just swings down a little bit like that and gives you access to the bulb there for swapping out the bulb. A little shield, bulb shield. Looks like it's going to be quite nice and easy to service actually. Looks like a screw here. This one here. Yeah, that's a longer screw for the side there. Just looking at the back here, from the back, I can see a screw here that comes through from the front to hold this front cover on, but it's actually, it's actually in behind this front cover here. So this has to come off. Um, that, I would say, this tensioner assembly has to come off Okay, so the idea is to remove this little clip here. Now, just looking at the at this clip here, and just uh, I had a little bit of a look at the material it's made from. I don't think I'd be uh, grabbing it with pliers. I think that might squash the clip. This little turned over clip here. I'll show you that when I get it out. Uh, but tweezers should just about do the trick, I think. And I think you can grab the. Uh, there's a little piece that's curled out here. You should be able to just slide it with tweezers like that. Let's get you a close look at the clip here. 
Yeah, you can see the shape of the clip there. I sort of wonder whether gripping it with pliers might cause that little loop piece there to get squashed uh, because this metal is quite fragile actually. So I just gripped it with the tweezers just on that little piece there, on the little piece that curls out. And then we need to loosen the little grub screw here that uh, holds the tension assembly in place here. Uh, but you also have to just push this little pin up slightly here to unlatch it from the plate. So now that's loose there. And then a two millimeter Allen key. Loosen this here. One turn there, yeah. And there's the tension assembly here. This is the little pin tensioner. And then that can be set aside. I mean, by rights, if, uh, if you're doing a full service, you would actually pull this tensioner apart and clean, the, clean in between the discs here. I won't go through that at this stage. I might do a separate video on that. So anyway, that's the tensioner removed. So now we should be able to remove this front plate here that should just, just pull it forward past the tensioner wheel there and it should just lift straight off there just like that there right here and that gives us access to the front panel screws there okay let's start by removing these two screws here this top one on the left here top front right screw there one right down here as well on the left hand side that one's quite tight oh, I've just noticed here there's a little spacer to come out that little spacer tube there and it's tapered so the wide end of the taper goes towards the case and the narrow end of the taper goes towards the chassis of the machine. Now something else is holding this on. Uh, wondering whether I need to take the bottom cover off. Okay just in case there's a hidden screw here I'll take the uh, bottom cover off. I'm just going to swap out my nice retro pillowcase here <laughs> so I don't get it all dirty to put on its back there looks like uh, straight flathead screws here four of them by the look of that okay there's the base there a little bit of crud inside there needs a good wash I'll clean that up and we've got drive belt here that seems nicely tensioned there and do we have a hidden screw we do indeed we have a hidden screw right here for the front cover let's remove that just need to make sure that it comes up and over the reversing lever there I'll just try and hold that in while I get it over the top of that that's it and the cover should just lift off like that nice and easily and we'll give that a clean so that's pretty much it as far as removing the covers it's all reasonably accessible now for servicing belt tension yeah might be a little bit loose I'll show you how to adjust that let's get the compressor in here and just blow the machine out I'm not going to do an absolute deep deep clean I'm just going to blow the lint out the dust and the grime and lubricate the machine and then give it a clean put it back together adjust the belt tension here Okay, a little bit cleaner there now. 
and I thought what I'd do is I'd do a before and after just to get a better idea of uh, what it sounds like before the service and after the service and you know whether we get any speed increase or anything like that so yeah the machine's quite cold too so it's a yeah very cool day today we had a really good frost this morning so the machine's not overly warm now I've got the power plugged in here you know I think this machine's uh, pretty safe it's all well insulated here and everything's all the wiring's covered so no no problem there I don't think it's overly dangerous to do this on this machine on other models yes this sort of thing could be quite dangerous you'd want to check that before you do anything like that like uh, powering the machine up with the covers off there anyway let's turn her on here let's have a wee listen and just get a rough uh, idea of speed here I'll just floor the foot controller Okay, there's our before shot there. So I've just unplugged there and let's go through and service the machine. If I was doing a full service I'd be removing the uh, you know this mechanism here and getting lubrication into the uh, this stop motion clutch here but I won't go through that today. I just really wanted to do a quick uh, service on the machine. I might cover that as a separate video. Quite like to start by giving these bits here a clean. You can see the bit of grime on the hand wheel there. Let's give that a quick clean up there. Might be able to see a little bit of discoloration there. It's just from sitting in the sun. Although it's got its own little sort of built-in slide-on case, these parts are still ex exposed. You know the likes of the hand wheel here. So I'd almost, you know, if I owned one of these, if I wanted to have it out either on display or to use the machine, I would be probably making a little cover to go over the whole machine just to protect it and stop it from yellowing like this here. Anyway, that's looking pretty good. As I say, I'm not going to get too carried away and too fussy with it. I'm just doing a quick, quick one today. Well, quick in quotes. I know a lot of my videos aren't all that quick. <laughs> Let's give the control dials a wee clean there. If I was detailing this machine, I would get in really close here and get all the little bits of grime and whatnot out from, you know, all these little nooks and crannies here. Yeah, this top cover here seems loose, but I think that's by design. Let's check these screws. Yeah, those screws, I think that's just to give a little bit of leeway for the uh, I think the handle hooks under this here. Okay, so that's the sort of cosmetics taken care of for this part anyway. Now let's get down to oiling. So let's start with the top shaft here. You might think that that's an oil hole but it's not. Uh, that's just access to the top of the bearing I think. Anyway let's get a bit of oil onto that top bearing there. And then if we work our way to the left, now if we have a look under here, we've got a cam here and then you've got another cam. So this is more like an open type cam there that needs grease. And this little closed type cam, you can see a little oil hole on the top, that's obviously for oil there. So I'll go ahead and grease and oil those two. Of grease for the other cam there and if you have a look just here you'll see a, a gear there okay so we're just having a, a look top down here's the hand wheel here and you can see the gear down in here let's get some grease onto that there 
I mean really to do this absolutely properly you probably should clean the old grease off the gear there and from around this area but and then you'll also see a worm gear down in here hopefully you can see that so there's a worm gear that drives the cam stack here you can see this cam stack revolving there let's just oil the cam stack gear there uh, grease sorry just go around for a full revolution there just wiping the grease onto the gear that's good there okay and I'll swing the machine around 180 so we're looking at the needle bar end now there's a another main bearing down right down in here so I'll get oil onto that Uh, just before I show you the oiling of this area here down by the needle bar uh, there's a few points here that should be greased really so we've got the stitch selector mechanism here and that should be greased here just get a little bit of grease on the back of there Let's take that excess off there get some grease down in here this is your needle position that probably actually would just do with oil on this little slider here just go on the back of that there oil into basically just everything that moves that there is that supposed to slip down here I think I think that there is supposed to come down and follow along this cam here and I wonder if that's actually seized up yeah that's the actual device that's the cam follower I think that's jammed there this would present itself as a fault you know when you go to select your stitch and nothing changes it's constantly just one stitch that is because of this here seized up here so let's see if we can start by just getting some oil onto it here yeah you can see it it is actually moving this here but I think it's supposed to come right down isn't it yeah, this is your stitch width lever stitch width you can see the little lever here engaging and disengaging so that's that's free enough it should come down on its own free will with a spring there let's just give it a helping hand just getting the tweezers in back there let's see if I can yeah there we go yeah so you can see that's dropped down now okay so yeah there we go nice and free so this here you can see is following the cam there so just a little bit of oil required there a bit of gentle persuasion so that's looking good there now should be able to go to there we go that's yeah that's harder to change now because I've got the width on the widest it's nice and easy when you don't have the yeah probably should put the stitch width back yeah that that's actually almost jammed it again yeah probably should have the width on zero you know before changing this stitch and we've got the uh, that's your tension there and that needs a little bit of grease on this slider here
Okay, this is the needle bar area here. You can see it's actually come up fairly clean. You know, I haven't had to really take anything apart as such. And um, just the air compressor. If you do use an air compressor, make sure you have a, a water trap on the air compressor in the line, just so that the air is nice and dry. So we'll start by lubricating the top and bottom uh, needle bar bearings here. So we've got this top bearing here, oil there, and the bottom one down here, oil there. Do the lower bearing for the foot bar there. And I would be probably just putting a little bit of oil down in there, just to um, help, you know, lubricate that spring a little bit. So the width is determined by this. This is your zigzag width. Let's put it on full zigzag there and we'll see that working. It's zigzagging there. Yeah, you know, with this being plastic here, I, I don't think it needs oiling. If I ever saw one seize up, you know, maybe get a bit of oil in there, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it at this stage. Just at the top here, we'll see the this is the tension release mechanism working here. If we have a look at the tension release here, if I lift the presser foot here, you'll see this little lever here get lifted. That's the tension release mechanism. So I'd be tempted to just oil that there on that shaft. If we have a look around the front here, we've got the take up linkages here that need lubricating. Now I wouldn't bother with this one here or this one here. They are, that's a uh, plastic or a nylon. I don't think that needs lubricating at this stage. This one here, get some oil into that as well. And then on the bottom of this crank here, just get oil both sides there. You might have noticed timing marks here on the needle bar. So we've got a top and bottom mark there. And if we have a look, we turn the machine. Let's just set the zigzag down to zero there. So we're basically on straight stitch. Yeah, I would say you're probably supposed to just eyeball across the surface here. But these, that top mark, that's the low point of the needle bar. That's where it should be. But it's actually going lower than that. So it's actually dipping down underneath this surface here. With the, you know, it's, that's probably okay. It's a relative setting. So it's all to do with the needle bar rise. That's the distance between that top mark and the bottom mark you can see there. So the idea is that when the needle bar is right down at its lowest point, you bring the machine, you turn the machine in operating direction until you sight the lower of the two marks and that's when the hook should be coming around and behind the needle. You may need to, after that timing's done, you may also need to adjust the needle bar height as an inde independent setting. So that might be why this is dipping down underneath. You know, maybe after the timing was done, the needle bar height was probably adjusted. That's That would be my guess on it anyway. I'll put a needle in, we can have a quick check of the timing here. I haven't finished the lubricating yet, but I thought I'd just check this while I'm in this area here. Okay, so I'm turning the machine in operating direction, and, and then I'll carry on turning until I see the bottom mark at that same point. And that, providing we've got the uh, needle in the center position, yep, and we don't have zigzag, yep. The timing marks are in, in position, so the hook point, which you can see right here, is not behind the needle, and it should be. So the timing is actually a little bit retarded here, so we need to advance the hook timing a little bit to bring it right in behind the needle there. I thought I'd show you the uh, timing anyway, just while I'm here. Now there's two screws here, one here, so you basically loosen that one, and then this one here, oh, 
that one was loose. Uh, well, that might explain why the timing's out. It's probably slipped on the shaft, I would say. We just swing the hook into position. While the gear's loose, you want to move the hook here, just so that it comes around just in behind the needle there. So you actually want the hook point to be in the center line of the needle there. Now I'm doing this from around the camera, I think that's fairly close. And that's where you want to tighten up your grub screws. And then what you want to check is that the you push down on the hook from above and up on this gear here, just to make sure there's no end play in the shaft there, and then just tighten the set screws up. Okay, that's the hook timing done there. Needle bar height, just having a quick look at that. Let's put it on full zigzag and I'm just going to take it over to its left hand throw. And yeah, so yeah, I think that needle bar is too low. Yeah, needle bar is just a little bit low. I Yeah, sorry, I, it's pretty hard to get on camera there. So what uh, is happening there is on the left hand throw of the zigzag, the needle, the hook should be coming in just above the needle eye and it's not. The, the hook's a long way above the needle eye relatively. So I'll bring the needle bar height up a fraction. This is a an ex, uh, perfect example of the reason you do not time your machine by using the relationship between the hook point and the needle eye because if the needle bar height is out your timing is going to be out it's just no so you know you want it, you want your starting point to be your timing and then you set your needle bar height from there so just go ahead and raise that just slightly i'm just going to nip that um, screw there up and have another wee look in behind here let's see how we're going here too high now. Needle bar's too high. I'll just uh, drop that down just a fraction. That's why I left that uh, screw slightly loose there. Yeah, it's still too high. I'm just going to come down. I, I went up too far there. Still too high. That could just come down a fraction more. That's pretty good. And it's just out of curiosity, have a look at where the timing marks are here now. Now, if we have a look at the timing marks, I'll just turn in operating direction here. Yeah, you can see that they're a lot closer to the, you know, running flush with the surface here now. Just dipping below it slightly. Yep, that's pretty good. I'll just nip that screw up there, needle bar clamp screw. Just going to double check that timing there. Yep, spot on, so that should be good there now. Now just before we go down underneath here, I just want to show you a couple more uh, lubrication points here. We've got the, uh, so I've got my thumb here on the reversing button here and you can see a mechanism there. So we've got a piece here that we should oil and then a slider here that we should grease. And then a little bit of grease into here. Some grease onto that slider there. There's also a uh, bearing here that should be oiled. That's the vertical shaft top bearing. Get some oil into there. It's actually a nylon gear, that one up in there. I wonder how reliable that is, whether they're, they're uh, starting to get brittle or not at this age. Seems to be okay so far. And then we also want to oil the lower bearing on that main shaft as well. It's this bearing here, 
so you want to get oil onto this onto the shaft it's actually that shaft there you want to get the oil onto and it'll, it will uh, just roll down the shaft onto the top of the bearing which is in here these linkages that one there and oil that one and this one here now these uh, pivot points here they should be greased now to to really do that properly you know this uh, shaft should really come out and uh, new grease should be applied you know clean these off and reapply grease I'm not going to do that today yeah so what you would do is you would loosen these screw the screw here to release this bearing here and also uh, the same here release that and then you will get a certain amount of movement with these uh, between these bearings for the shaft to move here and then you can go ahead and get oil and down there uh, sorry grease and down there you could probably get away with a little bit of grease on the outside of them uh, don't I wouldn't recommend this as a uh, you know an in-depth way of greasing these parts here but you know I'm sure that it wouldn't hurt just to get a little bit of grease around these areas here just in between those mating surfaces there and then let's do this end while we're here they are actually plastic or nylon bearing surface there and then we'll go ahead and oil the feed dog linkages here just either side of that uh, what I didn't show you also is we should really lubricate this down in here in that hole there just the middle hole on the hook there and maybe just a a bit of oil onto this slider here for the that's the um, plate slider throat plate slider I would push that push that out like that get a bit of oil onto there and also there's the feed dog cam follower here oil that one so I think that's a about it for the oiling and the greasing I hope I haven't missed anything there don't think I have but sometimes I'll miss something when I'm videoing like this uh, now let's deal with the motor belt tension here so the motor belt tension there just a little bit loose there it's it's hard to show on camera there but I can feel that it's just a little bit too loose I want to loosen this here that will be probably a 12 millimeter will it? yeah 12 millimeter spanner or a socket would do the trick just loosen that it's pretty tight and just come down a fraction and retighten that there this mounting bolt don't want that too tight either that's that's reasonably tight probably want to loosen that just slightly oops that's too far that should be about it they tend to want to tighten up as you tighten them as well so yeah that's that's better Tighten that up there. Yep, that's good there now. I've decided to break this video up into two parts. This video is quite long now and I think it's probably a good idea to do a second part and show in that video the cleaning of the machine and the assembly and the testing. So keep an eye out for that video coming up soon. As always, thank you very much to my patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, take a look at patreon.com forward slash sewing machines. I'll leave a link in the description down below. And thank you very much for watching.